Uh, dear learners, I now take this time to welcome you to our next lesson and the next topic. We now get to topic number six and topic number six is what I am presenting to you now. That is nationalism and the road to independence of African countries is our next topic. And as we get to the new topic, we meet new words, which we call vocabulary. And these new words that we are going, you know, as we get through nationalism and the road to independence, you are going to meet these words time and again. We'll be talking about these words, but you must be knowing the meaning of these words. And that is why we present them to you as vocabulary. And these are words that we have for you. We have nationalism, we have nationalist, we have patriotism. You need to know how to pronounce them. I'm talking of patriotism. We have patriot. We have pan-Africanism. We have pan-Africanist. And then we have independence. Once again, we get through this vocabulary. We have nationalism, nationalist, patriotism, patriot. Pan-Africanism, Pan-Africanist, independence. Now, when you see where we have zim, zim, that means we are looking at this deals with the, the, the spirit or the feeling. So we have nationalism, patriotism, Pan-Africanism. What do they mean? So we are getting to look at uh, this meanings or this vocabulary one at a time so that you get to know what they do mean. We are talking of nationalism and patriotism. We bring them together because they are related. When we talk of nationalism, my boys and girls, we are saying nationalism is one's love for his or her country one's love for his or country. Do you love your country? I always tell you, me, I'm, I love my country. I am proud of my country. I am proud of my continent. And I'm proud of my color. So I am a nationalist. I am a patriot. So that is national, I mean nationalism. It's one's love. It is not an individual, but it is a feeling of that person. You, if you love somebody, you tell that person, I love you. It is a feeling within you. And it is expressed by, you know, the person you love is that you hug. But I'm not saying you go hugging people this time. We have this pandemic and it is still combing the world. So she's from, I mean, she's from uh, hugging, shaking hands. Keep a distance from people who are not your close family members. But the spirit of nationalism, you are supposed to demonstrate it if you are proud and you love your country. Two, we are saying nationalism also refers to one's love or desire to develop his or her country economically, socially, and politically. Economically, you want to develop your country. You engage in activities that makes you earn a living so that you don't become a thief. You don't become a burden to the members. If you are able to take care of yourself, that means you express the spirit of nationalism. How about socially? Do you care about things that are around you, people around you, members around you? How about the state facilities, services that are provided? The roads are there. Are you the kind of a person who goes and begins digging the road, vandalizing national property? Then if you are not doing such things, you then express the spirit of nationalism or patriotism. And about politically, 
you do you have the will to yes say i am a person i'm a ugandan you stand and then demonstrate it you are not ashamed i pity people that you see somebody is driving in uganda is a ugandan but in his car he has a flag of the united states of america that means you are not a patriot you do not express love for your country uganda cranes is playing but instead you instead of going to watch the uganda cranes playing the national team you choose to go for arsenal you choose to go for manchester united are you really expressing the spirit of nationalism and patriotism a political person will engage in, a mature person like me engage in the politics i show interest of leading people that is politically i mean politically motivated spirit like now we have 2021 elections coming if you are a nationalist then you will go and participate in the election directly or indirectly so that is nationalism we get to nationalist or patriot now this one nationalism is a spirit patriot patriotism is a spirit when we talk of the nationalism and then patriot nationalist and patriot here now we are referring to persons you that expresses that feeling you are called either patriot or nationalist person with great love for his or her country is that nationalist we get to another one see we are looking at pan africanism we are saying pan africanism was a movement that was started to promote the rights and welfare of africans in and outside africa now the spirit started by those africans the uh those who have the feeling they are Af- of african descent but no longer in africa men like marcus gavi they are living in the caribbean african americans who are there they saw and realize that yes we have to identify ourselves with the our brothers and sisters in i mean in africa so we are also defining it as being a movement of people that believe in the brotherhood and sisterhood of africans as long as you carry the blood of africa whether you are in the united states you are in france you are in britain but as long as you believe that yes you are forced to go there your forefathers were taken to these countries by force you identify yourself you identify yourself with your brethren in africa so it was a movement that believed in brotherhood and sisterhood of africans how about pan africanist is a person just like nationalism pan africanism is also a spirit how about a pan africanist a person with great love for africa as a whole i am one i love my continent i'm a, i'm proud to be in africa to be an african and most especially i am a proud ugandan uh we continue and looking at i mean i look at we are now looking at how nationalism is practiced practicing nationalism we are going to look at how it is practiced at home how it is practiced at school how it is practiced nationally in the country at home we are saying what by caring and protecting family members obeying family rules and regulations respecting protecting and preserving family property do you do that if you do that then you are practicing nationalism or patriotism two at school what do we do at school singing the national anthem we always sing the national anthem and singing the school anthem 
among others. How about in the country? We sing the national anthem, always. And as we sing our national anthem, we sing it with love and pride. Another one is by participating in national elections. If you are in the age bracket, I know you, my boys and girls, you are not still in this age bracket. But we teach you because you are going to mature and become mature adults in this country and you are supposed to be responsible. You take part. But as a learner, you must be inquisitive. 2021 is coming. What are the things that take place when an election is organized? Another one is by preserving and promoting culture. Do you love your culture? I love mine. And I always promote it wherever I am. I'm proud of my language. And I, I think that is the best way I can promote my culture. I speak my language. I know it. I have taught it to my children. And that is uh, the, the, the spirit. Uh, now we are going to look at uh, African nationalists. Examples of African nationalists who spearheaded the struggle again, I mean, for independence in their respective countries. We have, we start with Uganda. Charity begins at home, but doesn't end there. So that's why we are starting with Uganda. We had Dr. Paul Milton Obote. Uh, when we move further, we look at, Do I mean, Muse Jomo Kenyatta in Kenya. We have uh, Patrice Lumumba, DRC. We had Kenneth Kaunda, Zambia, Kwame Kruma, Ghana. We have Emperor, Emperor or Emperor Eil Selassie, Emperor Eil Selassie of Ethiopia. That E is for Emperor. Um, we have Benjamin Namdi Azikiwe. B is for Benjamin Namdi Azikiwe of Nigeria. We had Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, among others. But if you get to our notes, you'll find that, yes, the list is longer than this. You will get from other countries. These are examples of nationalists who struggled for the independence of their countries. Some of them succeeded, others did not. But the truth is they have remained celebrated in their countries for their contributions towards the end of colonial rule. Boys and girls, we continue. We now look at methods used by African nationalists to demand for independence. There were basically two methods that African nationalists used to demand for their independence. One was a peaceful method. There were peaceful methods that were used. A case in point is Uganda. Ugandan struggle for independence was peaceful. That is why you don't hear of uh, political prisoners during the struggle for independence because they did not choose to use violence. We had violence and peaceful method. Uganda chose to go peacefully using diplomacy in order to demand for independence. Peacefully, how did African nationalists struggle for independence? One, by forming political parties. Two, they organized political rallies, and political rallies, of course, were organized by political parties. Another one was forming or staging boycotts. Another one was seeking support from major world organizations like UN, Commonwealth Organization, among others. Another one was by forming trade unions. We'll get into the details of this. This is yet the preliminary part of it. We are just introducing you to this one here. Another method that was used to demand for independence was violent method, which included forming or staging rebellions. Another one was staging strikes and riots. Uh, we had also liberation movement that were, um, I mean, that were formed. We had also staging or forming des demonstrations against the whites and then organizing armed struggles like we saw in countries like Zimbabwe, 
Uh, I mean, we'll see them in Zimbabwe and even in South Africa against apartheid, we saw them. Now, we look at reasons why Africans demanded for independence. Why do you think Africans demanded for their independence? There were basically three categories, or these reasons can be categorized into three. One is um, economic reasons, we have also political and social reasons. So we start by looking at economic reasons. What were the economic reasons? as to why Africans demanded for their independence. One, to gain their lost land. Africans lost their land. In South Africa, the South Africans lost their lands, especially those countries where these people settled. In Uganda, land in Buganda was divided into two. You know, you know that. Um, this was pronounced in the 1900 Buganda Agreement where land was divided into Milo and Crown land. And Crown land was specifically put for the colonial government. That was absurd. It was not something called for. So Africans wanted to regain their lost land. Two, they wanted to regain their independence. That's very true. They had lost their independence. They had lost control over each and everything that they had. Three, they wanted to bring an end to, to forced labor. These people were forced to work in I mean, uh, white man's plantations and farms, either for little pay or for no pay. So these people wanted to end that. About socially, we have others, other reasons, are, I mean, uh, reasons, economic reasons are there, but you can't bring them all here. Social reasons included, one, to bring an end to overtaxation, which is also economic. Two, to revive African culture. Africans lost their culture because these people came and imposed their Western culture on the Africans. So Africans lost their culture. They wanted to revive the lost culture. That was beautiful. Three, to end segregation. Segregation, the treatment of people based on the races. It was what, was, what defined the rule of the white man. In Kenya, we had a Calabar policy. Much as the Calabar policy was related to apartheid. People were treated the best on their color. If you are dark skinned like Miss Okello, you would suffer. And uh, we had also the political reasons. Political reasons, among others, included to rule. Africans wanted to rule themselves. Yes, they wanted to rule themselves. They wanted to make their own laws to govern them. These were some of the reasons as to why the African national, I mean, Africans demanded for their independence. Boys and girls, I am heading. I mean, I'm moving forward. We are looking at reasons why African resistance against colonialists was defeated. The truth is Africans before colonialists took over their territories. They resisted. They resisted them. But their resistance did not stand. They were defeated. Why were Africans defeated? Number one, Africans were not united. This can make me shed tears. Africans, even up to now, if a white man comes back to repossess Africa, he would succeed. Why? Because even up to now, divisionism, I mean, divisionism is still existing in Africa. Africans are never united. And they are divided. That is why you see even today you'll find that, yes, we call ourselves Ugandans, but you'll find that, yes, people are still divided into the tribal or ethnic basis. That is what is killing Africa. And it gave room to the white man to come and take over controls. Two, Africans had inferior weapons. Yes, spears, arrows could not, I mean, survive the guns. So Africans, because of the inferiority of their weapons, they lost their territory to the, I mean, the white man. Africans had weak armies. The, the armies were not well trained and therefore they could not withstand. Africans betrayed their fellow Africans by collaborating. In Uganda, we know those who collaborated with the colonialists. A case in point is Nua Baguta in the West. Semeka Kungulu in Buganda, who extended the colonial rule to, um, to eastern and northeastern Uganda. We had Kabaka Mwanga 
He collaborated with them, but time came that he resisted. We had Apollo Kagwa, Sapolo Kagwa collaborated with these people. He was the region of Kabaka Daudichwa, but he collaborated with the colonialists. So this, among others, are examples. Even outside Uganda, we had those who collaborated. So the collaborators betrayed those who did not collaborate with them and made the Africans to be defeated easily. My boys and girls, I now come to the end of my lesson for today. But I want to tell you that please do me a favor. Always stay safe. Wash your hands with the water and soap. Bye-bye for now and may God bless you.